Are you looking to acquire your first finches but not sure where or how to begin? Well put your feet up, kick back and relax and I'll give you my top 10 tips for beginner finch owners. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where I help you with finch info tips and tricks. As a new finch owner you should be armed with the information that will help you to be the best and most responsible keeper of these beautiful birds that you can possibly be. And today we're going to look at my top 10 tips to help beginners in the hobby just like yourself. So let's jump right in and look at what I consider to be the ultimate starting point. Research. I can't stress enough how important this one is. Research as much as you can and when you think you're done, research some more. Then research again. Research builds knowledge and knowledge is key in this hobby. I mean you're here right now aren't you so you've already made the first step. There are many things that you'll need to look into. What breed do you want? Is that breed going to be right for you? What are the needs of that particular breed? The diet, housing type and space, maintenance and care. What equipment do you need? Can you afford to buy all the stuff your finches will need? Not just to start with but for the rest of your finches lives. Food, equipment, first aid and medicine. What are the health hazards you need to be aware of? Do you have a specialist avian vet local to you? There's tons of info out there that will help to answer your questions and alleviate your worries. So, broaden your horizons and look at as much info as you can on any one specific subject. That'll help you come to an informed decision on what you'll eventually feel is suitable for you. Buy from a responsible breeder instead of from pet shops. Birds from pet shops are oftentimes surplus to requirements from unethical breeders or from people who weren't prepared for breeding situations. They're often kept in unsuitable and unsanitary conditions. You might even see some that lack feathers and look scruffy because they're either plucking themselves, being attacked by the cage mates, or they're that young that they're not even molted into their adult feathers yet. A responsible breeder would never make birds in that condition available to prospective owners. A responsible breeder would never allow young birds that are not done molting to go through the stress of the transition to a new home. That's a death sentence in a lot of cases. Responsible breeders care about the birds as much as they care about where they're going to live for the rest of their lives. Pet shops almost never turn buyers away. Responsible breeders will, if they don't feel like you're right for their birds. Pet shop birds are extremely vulnerable to catching all sorts of illnesses and diseases from the constant influx of people eyeballing them and breathing up too close to them every day. They're usually cramped into small cages for long periods of time with way too many other birds and so they've no escape when people get too close for comfort. I could think of so many reasons why I'd strongly advise you against buying from pet shops and just as many for why I'd implore you to buy from a responsible breeder. Choosing the latter could save you a lot of heartache further down the line. Prepare for the homecoming. Now that you've decided where your finches are coming from, prepare for the big day. You'll want to have everything ready and in place for when your new feathered friends arrive home. Make sure your setup is 100% ready. Moving to a new home is one of the most stressful times your finches will ever experience, so you'll want to avoid having to mess around near or inside their enclosure once they're in there and keep any close contact to a minimum while they settle in. Make sure they're in a nice quiet and calm location. Avoid placing them in the path of heavy family traffic and just leave them be as much as you can and for as long as possible. They'll soon get used to being there but it's imperative that they're given time to adjust. Adding an electrolyte based supplement to the water for a few days will help them massively. It'll give them a much needed energy boost and more importantly helps to kickstart corticosterone production which is the main hormone produced by birds in response to dealing with stress. Quarantine. This may not apply to you if you've acquired your first finches from the same place all in one go, however it will if you acquire any more in the future and also you'll still follow some of the same methods either way. So let's look at some of the ways that this is done. Some medicate heavily during this stage, some don't. Some segregate new birds for months, some for a few weeks. Find a way that suits you by looking into how different people do it. For the purpose of this tip I'll skim over my regime, but first why is quarantining new birds who are joining an existing flock important? Well, new birds can carry pathogens they've built up an immunity to, and that your existing birds haven't, or vice versa. New birds may arrive well, but then develop an illness or disease later on due to it laying dormant, or because of the stress that they go through during the whole rehoming process. There are many reasons, and although it's tempting to add your new birds straight away, just be patient and trust the process. During this time I provide stress treatment throughout the settling in period, and then they'll go on to parasite treatment. 
over the preceding weeks, I'll then monitor behaviour and toilet habits constantly. If I notice any unusual change in either of the two, I'll pull that bird immediately to separate him from the rest. It's preferable to quarantine new birds well away from your existing birds. Separate floors or separate dwellings is ideal, and I know that's not always possible, but as some pathogens can be airborne, if you're able to, separate rooms is advisable. Always keep hospital cage just in case. Following on from the last tip nicely, this one is a must for every finch owner that keeps two or more birds and unfortunately it's inevitable that you will need one someday. A hospital cage would be used when you need to separate a poorly or injured bird from the rest of your flock so that treatment can be done in a controlled environment. A single breeding cage is ideal as the smooth back and sides will prevent unnecessary climbing. During your research phase you'll have found out what you'll need for it but if not, you'll need some form of heat lamp as sick birds struggle to regulate temperature. Preferably a clay colour substrate such as kitchen rolls so faeces can be monitored easily. Floor perches or ones close to the ground so that you eliminate the risk of your bird falling. Shallow dishes for food and water kept on ground level. Hygiene needs to be meticulous too and it needs to be kept in a quiet stress free area. Other than that just keep it simple. The aim is to provide an environment in which your bird can recover as quickly as possible. Practice good husbandry. A regimented schedule is extremely important when it comes to owning finches. You can't just expect to leave them be for days on end and think that they'll be okay. They'll need daily care and attention. The hygiene of your finches and the home that they live in needs to be regular and thorough. This will include creating a clean regime of daily and weekly tasks. It includes making sure they have fresh food and water each day too, as well as certain days when they'll need a bath to clean themselves. Depending on the material used, the floor substrate may need changing each day too. You'll also need to provide for them financially, and by that what I mean is that they'll need good quality foods, medication, supplements, accessories for their enclosure, and despite most finches being classed as hands-off, they'll need attention too. Regular interactions with them will help build trust, which in turn will make the cleaning times and any entering of the enclosure less stressful for them and for you. Keeping a clean environment will mean there is a lower risk of any bacterial infections occurring. It's only fair too considering you're the only person that they'll rely on to provide them with the care that they deserve. Know where to position your enclosure contents. This might seem like an obvious one but if not done correctly the consequences could potentially be fatal. Food dishes and water containers need to be kept away from being directly underneath any perching or roosting areas. If not your birds will defecate in them which leaves them at risk of contracting disease and infections. Flight paths should be clear of any obstructions too. Finches prefer horizontal flying and so anything in their way will prevent them from being able to exercise correctly. It also poses an injury risk if they were to break into a flight frenzy and hit something while trying to escape a perceived threat. Cuttlefish bone is generally pinned to the enclosure sides near a perch so that your finches are able to access it without actually having to perch on it or cling to the sides. Make sure that this is placed within easy reach but just below perch level so that if your birds do get spooked and suddenly take off they won't fly into the often sharp sides of the actual cuttle bone. Again if they feel threatened and fly off suddenly they're not considering what's in the way. They just want to escape as fast as they can. Baths that don't have a roof and sides should also never be directly underneath the perches. Your finches will probably drink from there too so again no positions where defecation from above can occur. Perching areas will need to be strategically placed. Some high some lower, but all distance from each other to allow and to encourage ample exercise. Don't jump into breeding. Breeding your finches isn't as easy as it may seem. I definitely wouldn't advise attempting it without first having researched it extensively and without talking to experienced breeders. The health of your birds and their potential offspring are at risk and getting it wrong can often have disastrous consequences. You need to be ready for any eventuality. Breeders who've been in the game for donkey's years still come across issues, so if this is something you can see yourself wanting to do, please make sure that you're making the right decision. Ask yourself, can you afford the costs that come along with breeding, the possible vet bills, equipment, food, supplements, etc? Are you able to dedicate the time needed to spend getting it right? Hours of researching, visits and conversations with other breeders, the possibility of needing to hand feed and raise rejected chicks, etc. Can you find suitable homes for your chicks when the time is right? If not, are you willing to keep them and dedicate the time and money to housing and caring for them? More cleaning, more cages, more expenses. 
If you answered no to any of the questions, breeding probably isn't the right choice for you. If you answered yes to all of them, then maybe it is. Just make sure that you are 100% prepared and that your birds are 100% prepared. Don't overdo it. Doing too much can have the opposite effect to what you're trying to achieve. Overfeeding certain foods is a huge issue in the bird keeping hobby and that's partly down to understanding the complexity of a good balanced diet. It can be a lot of trial and error but get it right and your finches will be on the way to living a long healthy life. Veg every day is fine but make sure it's varied in type and balanced in vitamins, minerals, amino acids and carbs. For example, egg food is a high protein food which you wouldn't want to feed your finches every day otherwise you risk overloading them with protein. The same goes for other foods containing the essentials your finches need. You don't need to use supplements in abundance either. If you do use supplements, make sure you're giving your finches the correct amount at the correct times. Just because it's good for them doesn't mean that it's needed constantly. Toys aren't really required for finches either and so there would be no need for a cage full of them. A swing and some things to pull on and tug at are usually enough. Packing a cage out with lots of toys looks prettier, but you're using up the space that your birds need to fly in and the toys won't get used in a way that would be beneficial to your finches mental health. With regards to cleaning, daily substrate changes and spot cleaning of perches and other cage contents are fine. You don't need to change the substrate every time you notice your finches have defecated, you'd be sat there all day long changing it every few minutes. Developing a basic daily routine will allow you to keep on top of your maintenance duties without being too obsessive about cleanliness. In the unfortunate event that one of your finches becomes ill, consult an avian vet if that's an option. Don't go trying all sorts of medications that you don't understand. If you do, you risk making the situation worse. If an avian vet isn't a possibility for you and you chose to self-treat, be very careful what you use and if possible seek advice from breeders or keepers with many years of experience under the belt. Focusing on my first tip in this video will soon have you feeling comfortable with the needs of your birds and you won't be needing to overcompensate for the unnecessary. Try to visit a bird show. Other than being a great day out, bird shows can be a fantastic opportunity to gain some much needed knowledge from experienced breeders and general avian enthusiasts. They're also a good chance for you to stock up on supplies you can see first hand as opposed to pictures online and you'll avoid the often costly shipping fees which if buying in bulk can work out much better financially for you in the long run. You'll be able to view birds there and then too and be able to pick from a huge range of species and breeds. If you're looking to purchase a bird or two, my personal advice would be to first go through a breeder. But if you do purchase from the show, look for specimens that are active and that look healthy. Avoid buying birds that are caged with others showing signs of stress and illness. Most of all, enjoy your time at the show. The best ones don't come around too often. So, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you're able to benefit from the tips I spoke about today. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video soon.